Boom, what's up Waves Capital? It's Royce Jacob, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I do of course want to wish all of you a happy New Year's, but first, I want to share my top three buy and hold stock picks for the new year of 2023. Okay, so first off, I know many of you are aware of the fact that this channel is focused more around trading, and I would consider myself personally as more of a trader. Trading is how I've made the far majority of the net worth that I have today. But as many of you would also know, we've spent a lot of time on this channel focused on long-term investing. And in all reality, when it comes to my personal portfolio, my common share portfolio is equivalent in size to my options portfolio. Okay, so my roots are in investing, although I am a trader, I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, therefore, I am always thinking about the long term, especially when it comes to fundamental potential of great companies, specifically small caps. Okay, so just wanted to preface the video by saying that I know many of you guys feel the same way. Trading is not for everybody, and that's perfectly fine, which is exactly why I wanted to make this set it and forget it stock video uh, for you guys today as we head into the new year. Okay, so I do hope you guys enjoy this. This uh, was a fun one to make. I was really excited to sit down and record this one. Um, and of course, if you do want to ride into 2023 with me, if you want to ride the waves into 2023, subscribe to the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Let's dive in, you guys. Okay, so before we get specific, I do want to go over the rundown of the video and, uh, you know, then we'll dive into these three gems. Okay, so in front of us, as you can see, is a graphic I've made of the three stocks we're going to be talking about today. I'm not trying to hide it. You guys can honestly just screenshot these right now and peace out. But <laughs> I recommend you guys stick around because I will do my best to rationalize why I'm so bullish on these stocks over the duration of 2023, and of course, talk about some price targets as well. Okay, so we'll go down the list one by one. SoFi Technologies, Matterport, and C3 AI Inc. Okay, as we go down the list on TradingView, as we talk about our longer term price targets, and all three time horizons for the three of these stocks are going to be different. SoFi is March, I believe, Matterport is April, and AI is in June, okay? So I will rationalize the time horizons. I will talk about why these, of course, aren't guaranteed, but why I do think that these are likely uh, given both technical and fundamental uh, rationale. But as we go down each of these, before we dive into the technicals, I feel it's important to catch up um, or if you're unaware of these stocks, which is perfectly fine as well, um, educate you guys or remind ourselves of what these companies do and why I'm personally bullish and I trust you guys uh, are bullish on these as well from a fundamental perspective. So to do so, once again, before we dive in to each of these one by one, we'll go over each of their websites, particularly the investor relation tabs. So SoFi, Matterport, and then C3AI, one by one. And um, once we, once again, remind ourselves what these companies do, give you guys my brief summary on why I'm bullish on them. We'll dive into the charts and I'll talk to you guys about where I see these stocks going in terms of price over the coming months, okay? So that's that. And then of course, at the end of the video, gotta wish you guys a happy new year's. Talk to you guys a little bit about how I'm trading into the new year and uh, just about how excited I am to ride, again, ride the waves into 2023 with all of you. Okay, so let's kick it off, SoFi. But first, I do want to read, as I'm sure you noticed at the bottom of this graphic, uh, I want to talk to you guys about the three criteria. Why did that just zoom in so hard? Sorry about that. Let's go back out. I want to talk to you guys about the three criteria, I'm sorry, four criteria um, that I kept at the top of mind when deciding on which stocks I was going to include in this video. Okay, and I do, of course, have many honorable mentions, many of which I'm sure uh, a lot of you have some ideas of what they are. Scroll down the watch this. You can kind of just screenshot that uh, or just slow that down right there and uh, see what I'm trading right now. But these are my top three for these three reasons. Okay, for these four reasons. Okay, uh, number one on my list of top criteria, okay, is they're significantly scaling revenue quarter over quarter and year over year even in this economy, okay? So when looking 
at their Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 earnings reports of 2022, each of these companies, all three of these companies have displayed significant growth, major growth. They're nearing profitability as well. They're still not profitable. I want to make that very clear. They're not profitable yet, but they are nearing profitability. There is a clear trajectory to obtaining profitability, uh, but more so they are growing like the hyper growth companies that they should be. Okay. So they're scaling their operations, expanding operations and scaling revenue significantly quarter over quarter. And uh, they're projecting significant year over year growth as well. Okay. So that's first, that is the very fundamental groundwork of why I'm bullish on these companies. Okay. Two market cap, no greater than $5 billion. The reason for this, and I've said this many times on the channel in the past, the smaller the market cap, the less capital inflow it takes to the stock in order to appreciate the individual share price. And this kind of feeds into number three as well. Number three being they are a prime target for acquisition or being acquired by a bigger company. For example, SoFi Technologies, right? SoFi Technologies, uh, they are banking 2.0, which we'll kind of learn as we look at SoFi uh, on the site. But SoFi Technologies, banking 2.0, maybe JP Morgan Chase acquires SoFi because they are becoming a significant competitor, okay? So that's just an example. Matterport, you know, maybe uh, maybe some real estate company scoops them up. C3 AI, maybe, maybe even Meta scoops them up considering they are an AI company. Some large tech company, Palantir or something scoops them up. But they have small market caps and they're prime targets for acquisitions by some bigger names in the sectors uh, that view them as competition and would want to buy them out, especially at these beaten down prices. I do want to say that this is extremely speculative to assume that a company will get acquired. Um, but honestly, these are the gambles that I've personally always been willing to take as a trader. These aren't blind gambles. These again, uh, I do have many reasons that I won't dive into into deep detail into today. But um, these are things that I do personally consider as a trader. And honestly, these are some of the uh, speculative bets that have made me the majority of again, my net worth over the course of my decade long trading career. Okay, last but not least, this one's simple, the potential to at least 2x. So over the duration of 2023, I do expect all three of these to at least 2x in value. And I will once again be explaining my price targets and why I think these price targets are extremely reasonable. Okay, so that's that, you guys. Again, feel free to screenshot this. I don't know if it's necessary because we just spent so much time here. And uh, you know, just add add these tickers to your watches and just keep an eye on them, even if you don't want to trade them, which is again perfectly fine as well. Okay, so that's that, you guys. Once again, those are my four criteria for picking these stocks. Um, and let me know in the comments down below what do you personally look for when picking out some winning stocks. Okay, I'm very curious as to what your guys' strategy there is. Okay, so so far again. We will talk technicals. I do want to talk to you guys about these two price targets you see right here. But first, let's remind ourselves of what SoFi is. So SoFi, I'm sure many of you are familiar, especially with uh, the giant personal loan bar, the credit bubble forming. But very short and sweet, SoFi, jeez, SoFi's mission. I got to I gotta fix this mouse, you guys. I apologize for this. SoFi's mission is to help people reach financial independence to realize their ambitions. Okay, so we can go to SoFi's homepage. Um, SoFi Better Banking is here. You can see the amount of products they have. They have such a crazy umbrella of investment vehicles, of investment products, of loans, insurance, credit cards. Um, you can invest on SoFi. They have it all, okay? And the way I've always described SoFi is banking 2.0. SoFi is banking of the future. SoFi is almost the middle ground between the traditional banking system, the legacy system, legacy financial system, and what crypto is aspiring to be. So it's almost like web web 2.5, if you want to say that. So that's SoFi. SoFi is doing ridiculous numbers. If we just scroll down to their revenue right here. I can think we can go down here. You can see that their quarterly revenue just over, well, again, Q1 2022, 350 million revenue, 390 in revenue, 470 in revenue uh, in this re those most recent quarter. That's insane, you guys. And again, they are nearing profitability. They're beating on EPS, uh, analyst expected EPS every single quarter. And they're at a market cap of $4.2 billion when they did last year annually, um, they did $1 billion in revenue, okay? which is absolutely insane for a $4 billion company. So they're just trading at 4X forward multiple PE, okay? That's extremely impressive forward revenue, I'm sorry. But that's crazy, you guys, especially for the pace at which SoFi is growing. Again, 
it's not just the fact that they're growing, it's the fact that they're growing at a hyper growth clip, okay? And that's what we look for, at least what I look for as a trader and an investor, okay? So short term, I do, uh, I will, I, I've been sharing this in the newsletter. Short term, I do think SoFi does have some uh, lines of resistance that it needs to breach when it comes to the next week, two weeks, maybe even a month out as we, as we hopefully experience the January effect. Go check out my recent video if you haven't yet. But you guys, SoFi has so much potential. I do think SoFi, once again, is a prime target for acquisition, which is extremely speculative. But I do think that at the very least, at the very least, SoFi will make its way back up to the 780 to 790 region to test a couple of different trend lines by March. I do think the January effect will kick in strong. I do think that uh, given SoFi's also retail, kind of the, the retail interest involved with SoFi, I do think SoFi has the potential to see somewhat of a hype rally. And uh, I do think all, all three of these have the potential to see a hype rally. That's almost number five on the list. No, sorry, where'd it go? No, down here. Almost that that would be definitely number five on this list of, of criteria that uh, I take into consideration when choosing these stocks is the ability to see a hype rally. Okay, does this stock have retail interest potential? Does this stock have the potential? And honestly, the story in the background to prod investors to get really excited about it. And uh, of course, price action is the primary catalyst for that usually, but does it have a cool story? Is it a cool company? All three of these, in my opinion, are sick companies with very, very bright futures that everyone can kind of understand, okay? They're not too complex to where uh, the individual investor cannot understand them and is willing to buy into them, okay? So that's just my two cents, wanted to add that in there. But uh, I will say that I do think SoFi can at the very least, lucky number seven, we'll go 777 on March 1st. But ultimately, when it comes to the duration of 2023, overall 2023, uh, I think inflation will start meaningfully cooling. Uh, and I think that will be evident in the CPI prints that come out in mid-January and mid-February for December and January. Um, the CPI reports, uh, I do think the Fed will ease up. I do think the Fed may pivot and actually start lowering interest rates um, come with, within the first six months of the year. Um, that's my thoughts. Again, that's speculative, but that is my belief. And I do think that the entirety of the market, specifically small caps, um, will will really appreciate in value over the first half of this year, okay? Especially because it's been so beaten down. Again, as you can see here, SoFi, even at current levels off its lows, is still down 80% from its highs and down, it is still down over 50% from its IPO price, around 10 bucks. Um, and uh, ultimately, I do think that over the course of 2023, and this applies to all three of these, maybe except for AI, but definitely so fine Matterport, I do think that the three of these can reclaim their IPO prices uh, and find that middle ground, find that reversion to the mean. Because up here makes no sense. It makes no sense for the stock to be back up at these levels, but it also doesn't make sense for it to be so low and so beaten down, okay? Especially the clip, it's growing once again. All right, and again, this concept, this principle applies to every stock I'm investing, right? Um, reversion to the mean. We've been talking about, we're talking about reversion to the mean when we're at the highs. And uh, honestly, I'm talking about reversion to the mean, but now to the upside when it comes to these oversold lows. It's like when we talk about the fear and greed index, right? You don't want to skew too far in either direction. And this applies to many, many just base principles in life as well. This is kind of a base principle for life. You never want to be too polarized, right? If you're too far on one side, if you're too far left, if you're too far right, that's probably not a good and definitely not a healthy place to be, right? You want to find that middle ground. You want to find that healthy balance. Um, therefore, I do think SoFi will find that healthy balance. I do think that many names, especially small caps and uh, growth stocks, hyper growth stocks in particular, will revert to the mean in the sense that they will revisit um, will climb back up to revisit their IPO prices. And I do think this will happen at some point in 2023. Maybe it takes maybe it takes another year, maybe it happens next December, but you know, that's why we're just holding shares. And uh, of course, never over leverage yourself, never trade on crazy margin, because we all know full well over the course of 2022, what happens when you over leverage yourself. Okay, so, so far my ultimate price target's $10. I don't know when we get there. I'm not gonna say that we get there by March, uh, maybe if it gets acquired, definitely we'll see 10 bucks. But ultimately, I do think we see SoFi stock achieve a $10 price target by the end of 2023. Let's move on to Matterport, okay? So Matterport, you know, we'll dive into it, but we have to talk about what Matterport is. So to sum it up, 
Matterport is the leading spatial data company digitizing the built world. By turning buildings and spaces into digital twins, Matterport unlocks unparalleled spatial data insights for companies and individuals to better design, build, promote, and manage their most valuable asset, which is their home, okay? Or, of course, construction projects. So Matterport, we've been talking about this a lot. I highly recommend you guys go check out Matterport. Listen to this little potter. Uh, check out their news. Check out their earnings. We're not going to dive deep on that now. But Matterport... This stock, it's ridiculous to me that this stock is currently sitting below a market cap of $700 million when their revenue has just been going, like their revenue has been climbing significantly and just smoking analyst estimates, okay? So Matterport, zoomed out. We can see that Matterport is currently still, even after, again, above its lows, barely, but still above its lows, down 93% from its all-time high of about $37.50. This price makes absolutely no sense. I want to reiterate that once again. But again, these lows don't make sense either, even given this kind of shady, bleak macroeconomic backdrop. All right. So Matterport IPO price was around ten dollars as well. This is SPAC. SPACs typically IPO right around ten bucks. That's the nature of a SPAC. But um, ten bucks is where Matterport IPO. It's a huge jump right off the IPO up to twenty-seven dollars. That's crazy, but that was just the nature of the times. Um, Matterport, I do think at some point over the course of the year, we'll revisit the $10 mark. Uh, and honestly, given Matterport's megaphone channel that it is currently displaying, I do think that we could see this happen by, I'll say May. Okay, so I do think it's possible to see a $9 to $10 Matterport by the month of May. 421 is um, a lot of you who are part of the portfolio group would know why 421 is <laughs> is. The date that we're talking about or is our kind of our time horizon for many names that we're discussing in the portfolio and well i'll just say it's because those are the date of uh, a few of our options contracts okay or the expiration date of a few of our options contracts all right so 421 and uh, that is not my only of course matterport is not my only april options contract but right now you guys the the portfolio is in such good shape you know what i'll just uh i'll, I'll read over this newsletter because i'm talking about trading anyway a little bit so We'll cover kind of what uh, what my thoughts are around my portfolio construction into going to, into 2023, and then we'll finish it out talking Matterport and I close it out with again probably the stock that I believe is most uh, most prone to seeing a potential hype rally and uh, really the sector that I'm most excited about going into 2023, and that is artificial intelligence and C3 AI, which is the leader in the sector. Anyway. As you know, and this is, of course, from uh, my recent trade alert newsletter that I just sent out a couple of days ago, or at the time of uploading a couple of days ago. As you know, we've spent the past few weeks constructing the portfolio to accommodate to this macro thesis. This macro thesis being, I got to read the macro thesis. I believe the markets will see mostly green over the month of January, and I believe small cap slash growth sectors will outperform large caps and legacy sectors. Remember, the January effect historically favors small caps as well. So once again, if you guys haven't watched my recent video, go check that out. Uh, but again, I'm extremely confident in the build out and diversity of our positions. Um, we've generated a meaningful amount of profits off of our put options. So as the markets melted over the past couple of weeks to close out the year, uh, really good little Christmas crash. Waves Capital was structured, was positioned with significant hedges. And thankfully, we were able to use those hedges to reinforce some of our longer term call positions, many of which, honestly, I bought a lot of longer term calls in the three of these. OK, so um, we created a plan. We stuck to that plan. And now we can reap the rewards of our winning trades as we ride into 2023. If you're reading this, then you're one of the few who is able to properly manage their capital over the past 12 months. This applies to all of you guys. If you're still watching the videos, if you're still playing the game, I mean, you deserve to be here. You've earned your place in these markets. I respect all of you, and there's no group of individuals I'd rather take on the new year with. Cheers to the future waves capital. Let's make 2023 one for the history books. Okay, so cheers, you guys. I guess I'll just say happy new years now. We'll recap that at the end of the video as well. But of course... If you do want to know exactly how I'm trading, again, I do hold common shares on all three of these stocks, of course. But if you want to know exactly which call options I'm holding on these, how I'm diversifying my, my portfolio. Again, these are three of, I think, like 12 to 15 names that I have call options on at the moment. So if you want to know exactly what my personal portfolio consists of, if you want to know exactly how I'm personally trading on a day-to-day -day basis, 
with rationalization of why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's the trade alert newsletter, you guys, as well as how I'm feeling about the markets, why I'm doing, again, why I'm trading the way I'm trading, which ultimately is based in the macro, the fundamentals, the technicals, talking price targets in real time. If you want to join Waves Capital for real, and that's the first link in the description box down below, my complete portfolio and daily newsletter. With it, you get everything that this little box right here entails. Uh, and it's only for a price of 15 bucks a month. I think it's extremely fair. I may be bumping this up at some point in 2022, but I will, of course, grandfather in everyone who signs up at this price point. But um, again, it's just 15 bucks a month, 40 bucks for every three months. You can try it free for seven days into the new year. And if you don't like it, uh, regardless of your pricing plan, if you don't like it, which I trust won't be the case, honestly, if you don't like it, you can always unsubscribe. That's perfectly fine. But again, I trust you guys will be sticking around and uh, I look forward to riding those waves into 2023 with all of you. Okay, so cheers. I appreciate it if you guys uh, sign up. But if not, no worries at all. I appreciate you watching this video. Okay, so let's talk Matterport price targets. All right, Matterport, once again, a spatial imaging company, spatial data. Matterport is currently printing a massive megaphone channel. It's similar to SoFi, similar to AI as well. I do have shorter term targets, as you can see right here. Shorter term areas of resistance, or lines of resistance, I should say, that I am trading on a shorter term time horizon personally. But I do think that it's very possible, especially maybe in their next upcoming earnings. Matterport also, arguably the best of the three candidates for acquisition. I do think Matterport could make its way up to test the top end of this megaphone channel. This is conservative resistance. Notice how I don't use that guy right there. I think that's ridiculous. Uh, I feel much safer and it just looks more organic and more uh, symmetrical, especially to the line of support on this megaphone channel, which is called the megaphone channel because it's going like that, of course. But nearing the bottom end of this megaphone channel, near strong support right now. So we saw a solid bounce today at the time of recording, 12%. Um, I do think Matterport can make its way over the next couple of months, next few months, I should say, to test the top end of this megaphone channel, which may seem crazy, but we've seen it. I mean, we've seen some crazy moves happen before, even earlier uh, in the month, like in August of 2022, when we saw some of those rallies catalyzed, of course, by the earnings call. I do think Matterport can see close to $10 by the summer. I'll say by May, I do think Matterport can potentially reclaim double digits. And of course, you guys, I can't guarantee any of this. A lot of this is completely dependent on when trend lines are tested and when certain market caps are tested. There are a lot of factors, but just for fun. And um, just because, you know, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see this happen just because that's how, you know, technicals work sometimes. It falls perfectly in line with what you think is going to happen. Uh, not all the time, of course, but it does happen. And uh, I do think it's very possible for Matterport definitely to break above $9 by the month of May. Okay, let's close out with one of my new favorite stocks. Hopefully you guys watched that uh, one of my recent videos on C3 AI, uh, new favorite AI stock. One of my favorite stocks uh, as made evident by this video as well. Going into the year of 2023, C3 AI Inc. C3 AI, this is not their investor relations, but I do recommend you guys go check it out. This is just their homepage, but it does describe exactly what they are. So this is Enterprise AI. C3 AI delivers a comprehensive enterprise AI application development platform and a large and growing family of turnkey enterprise AI applications. As you can see here, uh, C3 AI provides over 40 turnkey enterprise AI applications that meet the business critical needs of global enterprise and manufacturing, financial services, government, utilities, oil and gas, chemicals, agribusiness, defense and intelligence, and more. So as you can see here, you guys, you can scroll down this for yourself, but this is one of the companies of the future right here. We all know AI is popping off with, um, again, Lenza AI, that that app where everyone is posting the the you like kind of AI generated um, avatars of themselves. Uh, Chat GPT, which is absolutely insane if you guys have used it, um, and just kind of the progression of AI is, especially as we close out the year of 2022, leads me to believe that AI is almost certainly going to be the sector in the market that experiences a hype rally. Again, I don't know if it happens next month, two months, three months. I don't know if it happens in December of 2023. I don't know, but I'm extremely, extremely confident in the fact that at some point over the year of 2023, we will see a hype rally occur in the AI sector. 
And uh, just a little bonus, Veritone is my second favorite AI stock um, that I think has a ridiculous upside within the artificial intelligence sector. Okay, so let's close it out by talking AI price targets. Again, short-term price targets you can see right here. Feel free to just, I mean, feel free to screenshot this as well, you guys. I do keep this exclusive to the portfolio newsletter when I'm talking specifics about, you know, like, again, the portfolio uh, <clears throat> price targets and how I'm trading, when I'm taking profits, etc. But... Uh, again, we're just focused on the long term right now. June 1st is going to be my price target here. And that will be to test the broken line of support as new resistance, which is this white line right here has not yet been tested. Um, again, as you can see here, this gap is my first shorter term target. I do think this uh, 16 to $18 gap will come into play. When we see that, I don't know. I think it'll happen over the next, uh, I would say by the end of February, I think we could see that. But I do think it's entirely possible for C3 AI which is currently down nearly 90% from its all-time high. No, I'm sorry, nearly 90% from its IPO price of $100. This is the craziest one, you guys. And this is why I think this has almost the most upside potential of the three. Um, is that C3AI IPO'd, which mean that investment bankers put C3AI at a fair value of 10x its current level. So at a near $10 billion valuation, it's currently at a market cap of $1 billion, which is absolutely insane. Uh, I do think C3 AI at some point, I mean, that's a 10 X from here. That's I'm sorry. That's like a nine X from here, I guess, uh, which is insane. But uh, I do think at some point, definitely by 2025, I think C3 AI can easily reclaim the hundred dollar mark. So this is like probably if I could only choose one of these stocks to buy and hold for the next two to three years, it would absolutely 100% be C3 AI, okay, or ticker symbol AI. But when it comes to, you know, the first six months of the year, I do think it's possible for C3 AI to come up here. Once again, retest the previous line of support as new resistance that perfectly coincides with this little ceiling that it saw here um, in December of 2021, um, before, of course, the great sell-off of 2022 occurred, um, which would take us up to about 34, 35 bucks come the middle of the year or result in a price appreciation of 215% from here. And of course, common shares would be great on this. That's a cool 3X. But if you hold call options on this, those things are going to go ballistic. Okay, so that's the video, you guys. It was a little long, but I felt it necessary to kind of dive into detail and really explain my rationale with these. But I hope you dug, uh, I hope you dug the video. I hope you appreciated the video. Um, Please let me know in the comments down below which stocks you're most excited about going into 2023 and why. And uh, once again, if you do want to join Waves Capital for real, if you want to ride the waves into 2023 with us, then that's the first link down below. Um, and I appreciate you guys. Happy New Year. Have an amazing weekend with your family. Stay safe. And uh, I look forward to riding into the new year with all of you. So cheers, Waves Cap. I love you all. And until next time, always remember... Take action, make waves, peace team.